Okay, so hi, I'm Jeff Leisowitz from brownpapertickets.com. I am also the author of Not Effing Around, the No Bullshit Guide to Getting Your Creative Dreams Off the Ground. And of course, I love talking to creative people, so I've got one here for you today. It's Corey McDaniel. Uh, this guy is a theater director, a writer, is that true? No, no, writer. Uh, theater director, actor, teacher, producer, voiceover, <laughs> talent, yeah. Okay, you've been up to all kinds of stuff. So what is it that drew you into this world? Oh, I, I, what is it that drew me into this world? I, I feel like I've always been into this world. I mean, since the early days of elementary and junior high school, any opportunity I could find to, to get up in front of people was, was an opportunity that I would take. Uh, so it's, it's almost like it's in my blood. Um, as an adult, I pursue it because it's my life force. It's, it's what gives me joy. It's my work, my social, my entertainment, all of it wrapped into one. That's awesome. So what, what is at the core of what you love about this? What, why, why is this your thing, do you think? There's so many levels to that. Yeah. I, mean, I love artists. I love people. First off, I love people. And I love artists, and I love working with artists, and I love helping artists grow and get better, and I watch them do their thing, and I'm in a state of pure joy. Um, I, I, that's, that's one. Um, this sacred space of a theater, or a film set, or um, a radio station, they're, um, they're home to me, and, and many of us. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> I had a little trouble getting into it here. <laughs> no, that's uh, fine. Um, yeah, I'll start with that. I'll clarify it more in a minute. Okay, cool. That's great. So you've done all these different kinds of things in the past and, and currently. What are your goals and dreams? Where are you looking to take, where are you now and where are you looking to take your whole trip? Well, three years ago, I opened my own theater company, Theater 22, here in Seattle. Uh, we are currently running in this space our fifth main stage production. Um, so I'm in my third year. The company's in its second year. Um, and so most of my force energy and uh, career energy is, is being poured into this company. Uh, and because I, I, I do focus on my own career, I, I freelance and I still audition and I still direct for other groups around the region. Uh, but as an entity, as a company, I have a louder voice and I have the ability to work with a lot more people. And I also have the ability to, to give those people more opportunities to to create and to work and to thrust their careers forward um, and upwards. And so for now, I'm putting a great deal of energy into this company, um, producing and directing and, and trying to run as if we are a functioning um, full-time production company in a very strong creative theatrical city. Yeah. So a lot of my goals right now are revolved around that and building Theater 22 up. That's great. Do you feel successful where you are right now? It depends on the time of day. <laughs> Actually, yes, I feel extremely successful. I, I, as a young fledgling company in a city where there are so many companies at all different levels, from the large regional equity houses to the mid-sized houses to the you know, 70 small fringe companies that come and go and, and do, yes, I feel like we are very successful. We've been able to stay in the black. We've been able to pay all of our bills. We've employed over 300 artists, administrators, technicians, designers, in the course of the first two years that we've been functioning. And um, our art forms have been received very, very well. Uh, we've stirred conversations. We've stimulated community response. And I think that's, that's an incredible response to a new company and to a new group of people trying to produce in such an oversaturated area. Yes, absolutely. I do feel we are successful. Good, that's great. Which makes me yeah. feel successful. Yeah. It represents who I am. It's sort of where I put all of my energy. You know, I don't, you don't get it when you produce and when you run things and entities, businesses, companies, you don't get a lot of time off. So the reward is literally the people that surround you and, and, and their experience and, and what you experience with them. So I'm incredibly grateful for where we're at and the following that we have and the people that walk through the doors and the production values that we're presenting. I'm very, very grateful. Yes, cool. I think we're successful in where we're at. Cool. Congratulations. Thank you. So what have you learned about your sort of creative trip from the success that you've had? 
Oh, could you be more specific? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things. I mean, there's, 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 I've learned things in the business side. Uh -huh. I've learned things in the administrative side, uh, fundraising, artistic, creative, people. Um, it's a constant lesson in, in, in life, humility, professionalism. Um, there are so many things to learn. And one thing that I have learned is that among many, there's many things I've learned. I, I've learned that, um, that we are, that, that, that those of us in the entertainment world and that are contributing creatively to the world, coloring the world, if you will, very sensitive and creative souls um, without a lot of very creative and sensitive souls. Um, I've learned that just because I produce and that I perhaps write the checks or that I hire or don't hire doesn't take away the fact that I'm also still deeply moved by what I see and what I do and who I work with and how those relationships work. Um, I've learned about the community at large, uh, what affects them and what doesn't, what they respond to and what they don't. I've learned a lot about using our voice responsibly. Um, we have such a responsibility. It's literally, in a situation like mine, I've got this beautiful room with, with almost 100 seats and I'm gonna run for a month and I'm gonna bring a lot of people in. It's like the universe has said here, what do you have to say? And how do you want to say it? And that responsibility is a great weight, a great joy, and is not to be taken lightly. Like, there's a lot of thought and preparation and uh, consideration that needs to go into what you say when you have a public voice. I mean, that's one of the lessons I feel like I'm learning currently, um, is just the responsible use of that public voice that you have. Um, mm. That's huge. That's that's good. It can be pretty daunting. <laughs> Absolutely. And a little scary. And you know, I mean, um, we're still we're we're still at such a growing stage that I might you know I might have directed the show, and then I might be running box one night or concessions the next night, and I'm my my hands are in everything because because we're growing and we and they need to be, um, and it's a very interesting thing to be out in the lobby at intermission talking and hearing what people think of your work or your company's work or what the play is saying and it can come in all different directions with all different opinions and it, that's a beautiful beautiful place to be but not to say that it doesn't trigger a lot of thought and uh, consideration over what are we saying and how are we saying it sure so throughout the run of, of these shows that you've done with this company is there a theme that you are saying with this public voice that gets to be broadcast out there? And why is that important to you? Okay, well that, that answer, I think that has two answers perhaps. I think on one level we're trying, still striving to find our voice according to what the community that we're serving wants. So that's one, because I do definitely have ideas and perceptions of what it is we want to say and how we want to say it. Sure. Uh, but I know that we're also fluid and flexible in this because we, we have to cater to the audience that we're serving and the community that we're serving. It's not always about what we want to do. It's about what they want us to do. Uh, so that, on one hand, it, it continues to mold itself. Um, I do believe that we, first and foremost, my greatest desire is to be a forum where people gather and conversations are stimulated. I believe that, that myself and the company that I run and the people I work with more than anything are about community first and foremost. The first statement of our mission is to be a forum where people gather um, for the enlightenment and the healing of the human soul and the human condition. And this is where these topics are stimulated as a collective together in one room where we can stand and talk about what's affecting us as a people on a planet trying to figure it all out together, right? Yeah. And I think that um, that's working very well. That is very effective. Because I have discovered and do continue to realize that people really just want a place to be. You know, and they, and they say that too in, in statistically speaking and in marketing. If somebody goes to a play, for example, they're not going, the play is the third reason they're going. The first reason they're going is to be a part of something bigger than they are or to be a part of something within the community. And I think that we provide that well. And I think that we're continuing to strive to find our way to provide that well and to communicate that we have that and we're here. That's great. You are a thoughtful, articulate, and creative guy. I mean, you. Thank you. I don't always feel articulate. <laughs> 
ask well, my at least when the camera's on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's cool. So I want to know more about sort of like your process. Not, not the specifics, but almost conceptually. Like, what does it take for someone who wants to do what you do to do what you do, to get to the point where you've got a theater company, where you're putting out these shows, where you're doing this. How did you do it? Um, I actually do have a fairly methodical process with this. And I think if I want something, and, and, and we'll, we'll take it with the company, for example, um, or travel, or work in different cities, or, or whatever it may be. When I want something, I clear the space and the time in my world to allow myself to literally imagine what it's, my life is like being in that. And I start with an emotional place. I, my acting craft is sort of, sort of similar. But I'll start with an acting, I'll start with a, an emotional place. How do I want to feel? How, do I, how does it feel to be in that situation? How does it feel for me to have my own theater company? How does it feel for me to be working with the artists in town that I really want to work with? And I start there and I let that develop and I let that grow. And then I also structure my life in a way, one of the best pieces of advice any life coach could have ever given me was live your life as if you're there now. And so I do, and I did. I, before I had a theater company, before I was running one, I was working with other companies and I was finding ways to learn and get in there and, and really create my life the way I wanted to live it, doing what I wanted to do, whether I had it or not. And eventually it shows up in that void because your whole world is convinced that that's who you are. And that's what you have. And one of the best examples I have, I had one of my dearest friends and longest running, uh, longest running friendships and roommates for five years and she was an actress. We were both in Hollywood trying to make it and, and I met her at a transitional period in her life and when I met her, I, I, we shook hands, we were waiting tables together and I said, I'm an actor, what about you? And she said, I'm a writer. And today she talks about this story and she, how odd it was that she had actually never said that before. She actually just wanted to be a writer. But for the first time in her life, she said she was a writer. So as she and I became friends and our circles collided and became friends and her circles expanded, everybody knew her as a writer, even though she hadn't become one yet. And sure enough, her life is that of a writer with pilots under her belt, and books awesome. under her belt, and stories yeah. under her belt. Yeah. And I lived the same way. She was a great example for me, is to live as if that's who I am already, and it will show up. That's fantastic. And then not to say there's, there's a lot to be said for training and education and getting out there and learning and working with people that, that can help you get the tools that you need to do what you want to do. So when you're, when you're visioning your future self, which by the way, that's one of the steps in. Yeah. Not yeah. effing around, of yeah, course. Yeah, you gotta see it before you can hit it. Right, but what does that look like for you? Are you meditating on this? Are you journaling about it? Are you doing like a sort of dream board? Talk I've done you. them all. Uh -huh. I think the biggest, the biggest, one of the biggest uh, tools I've used, I journaled most of my life since the age of 13, and that's sort of fallen more to the wayside. Now it's more of a, uh, then there were phases where it was a deep meditation. Nowadays it's more of just a quiet time and envisioning. Sometimes it's putting on music that triggers the thoughts that I want to follow for a while. Um, that vision is part of that. Vision is one of the most important tools that I think many people need to grasp that they need to have, be it actors or singers or directors. That vision is, is, is your end result. It's the location where you're going. And the road in between on that map is unknown. We don't know what's in between, but you gotta know where you're going. So it can take many forms for me, but it literally is, it's an emotional place. It's an emotional place where I feel the way I want to feel when I'm living that way or in those moments that I want to experience. And the universe has no choice but to bring it to you. <laughs> <laughs> nice, that's great, man. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about opportunities and yeah. making your own opportunities. You strike me as the kind of guy who makes his own opportunities. I do. Is, it, is this true and why is, it, why is it important and how do you do it? Oh, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> um, so, yes, I do make a lot of opportunities. Uh, one thing I do, I try to be conscious of, and, and I try to remain very aware of, and it's taxed in several places in my office and in my living space, is to be open and be aware of omens. Right? You never know where messages are coming from. 
um, or what the, those messages are going to be. But sometimes you might have the thought of, you know, I'd, I'd really love to learn to do this, or I'd love to work for that theater, or I'd love to, let's take, I'd love to work for that theater, for example. And if you've, if you've got that in your intention and you've got that in your vision and you know what it feels like to be working there and how great you feel, <clears throat> then sure enough, somebody's going to cross your path who has a connection for you or an opportunity for you. And a lot of it's just being open for the opportunities that are in front of you. I do create a lot of my opportunities. Yes, absolutely. I will get on the phone and book a space and find a show and cast a show and I'll do it myself and raise the money. I'll do that. And I do it a lot. But... It's also a lot of just listening to the omens. And sometimes those omens are coming from yourself. And then you just follow through on them. Yeah. <laughs> it's about taking, you know, you, you take the steps. You, you have the inspired thought. Inspired thought's very powerful. It shows up in a form. It gives you joy. It's, it's a thought, wow, wouldn't this be exciting if we did this? And what happens is, is a lot of people let it fall to the side. They don't follow through with it. But that inspi inspired thought came powerfully. And it came from some place important. Inside of you, outside of you, I don't know, but it showed up. And that's an omen. Follow through with that. Maybe you need to pick up the phone and call somebody and say, hey, I just had this thought. And doors open so rapidly and easily when you follow inspired thought. Yeah. So it is about opportunity and creating your own opportunity, but a lot of times it's just listening. <laughs> Amazing, right? Yeah. <laughs> we run around a lot of the world, not... We do run yeah. around a lot, and we spend a lot of time doing this, you know what I mean? And we're yeah. missing a lot of messages that are coming our way. <laughs> that aren't on the phone. Right. <laughs> exactly. So one of the things you talked about that reminded me of something in the book as well, uh, and I know you haven't read it yet, but the chapter is called Play It Unsafe. Have any thoughts on, on that? I mean, it sounds I like... Do. Yeah, okay, let's hear it. Well, there's this routine that I tend to go through, and it, it, uh, I could have an inspired thought that leads to a production like this where I've employed 32 people, and, and you know the money wasn't there when I started, and then the money showed up. We found it, for example. What happens sometimes... Um, the phrase again, play it... Play it unsafe. Play it unsafe. So I'll have an inspired thought, I'll move on that inspired thought, I'll start creating something, and then at some point, inevitably, fear will hit me, and I'll panic. And it could be at four in the morning, it could be at three in the afternoon, it could be in the middle of a rehearsal, and I, I'm panic-stricken. And I'm hit with that old sense of self that was like, who the hell do you think you are? This is impossible, you're gonna fail. You're gonna lose all your money. You're not gonna be able to do it again, or whatever it may be and it immobilizes me. And in those moments, it literally can immobilize me. And in those moments or in those days or when I'm experiencing that, it's, it's a huge conflict. It's like the two sides of myself, the inspired, fearless self and the, and the cautionary, fearful self battling each other out. Now, most of the time, the inspired, fearless one is winning, obviously, because I just keep plugging away. But it's getting through those moments of fear that's, uh, that's, that can be the biggest challenge. So, that's when a lot of people turn around. Right. So how do, you, how do you get through it? What do you do? What's your process or, or thoughts or whatever to, to get rid of that doubt or plow through it or whatever? I mean, some of that's just core philosophy for me. Because, uh, one, I was raised that if you, your word is the ultimate final thing. It is the only thing that is true to who you are and to who you, you can be. And if you don't stick true to your word... Who yeah. are you? Yeah. So there is a huge part of me that just stays, st that, that knows I need to stay committed to what I've said I was going to do. If I've committed to you, I'm going to do this, and this is how you are, I would like you to be a part of it. I'm going to stay committed to that. And I also, I mean, I've been through therapy, and I've been through recovery, and I've been through all kinds of fun things in life that we go through when we're trying to figure out who we are and we're making a lot of mistakes. And the one thing I do know is that no matter what, the only way to get to it is to go through it. There is no other way. It's whatever that through it is, you have to go through that, through that in order to get to it. So it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be unpleasant. That's what friends are for, and that's what you know, your local eateries are for, so you can sit and chat it out. And I do a lot of that. I've got, you know, I do a lot of that. I do a lot of purging where it's releasing some of that negative baggage and stress that I'm carrying so that I can continue to create. You have to. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy for anybody. And everybody who's on a creative path, and really anybody who's mm -hmm. on any path, mm -hmm. is going to face that at some time. And I guess the, 
you know, the real question is, do you get through it and how do you get through it? Right. Well, I'm going to go from point A to point B in any one situation. And what's in between point A and point B is not up to me. It's not up to, it's not up to, to anyone. <laughs> and there's nothing I can do to, to truly control that. So the only thing I can do if I want to get to point B is just know that no matter what's in front of me, I have to keep forging through. Fantastic, man. That is, that is the NFA philosophy right there. I'll NFA, say. people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as a creative person, how do you define success? Like if you just boil it down, what, what is it for you? Maybe I'm still trying to figure that out. As a creative person, I think the greatest of all my loves is, is the uh, craft of acting. And I feel successful when I'm watching actors that I've worked with or guided through their process. When I'm watching them do what they do and do it beautifully and honestly and truthfully, that's when I feel like I'm a success because I helped guide that. I created a form where that could be. I helped, as a team, we co-creatively figured out what was happening and why it was happening. Creatively, it's, it's, it's almost undefinable. I don't know how to define what, what, what success is. It's, it's, it's an experience. Success is an experience. It's not a dollar amount. It's not a number of seats that are filled um, creatively. It's, it's, for me, because I'm, I'm a director, a lot of it is watching other artists fly, watching them do what they do and do it beautifully, uh, especially if I've had my hand in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough question. It is, and it's a, it's a different answer, I think, for everybody. You know, and yeah, and it, a lot of it, too, goes back to that, that issue of vision. Mm -hmm. What was the vision for a play, for example? Does this play that's now alive and functioning and happening, is it in alignment with the original vision? Because the actual play that does arrive is often very, very different from the vision, but the emotional feeling that you felt when you had that vision if it's the same as what you feel when you see that production, that is success for me. That is, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, so if you could sum up your philosophy on making stuff happen, if you could talk directly to the director, the playwright, the actors out there in the world, and give them your recipe for making stuff happen, what would that be? I believe that structure is freedom. Having structure in your life is freedom. Living your life as if you're already there is freedom. Do what you say you're going to do. Don't commit unless you can fulfill your commitment. Communicate learn, and keep plugging away. Hell yeah, man. I mean, yeah, it's like I tell my actors, back to basics, ladies and gentlemen. Be seen, be heard. Be true to the words that you're speaking. What else is there? <laughs> and there's a lot to be said for just getting out there and learning. I mean, before I opened a company, I worked for many companies. I worked in PR, education, marketing administration, bookkeeping, fundraising. And by the time I'd done one little piece at all these other places, then I had the skill set to take on the whole package myself. But I had to get up off my ass. I did not sleep until noon because I'm a creative artist, and I did my decades of that, trust me. But, but there's structure, and adding structure and discipline into your life adds an, a level of commitment and professionalism to get you where you need to go. And you have to have the vision. You have to have the belief. You have to know what it feels like to be where you want to be. You don't have to know what it looks like. You have to know what it feels like. Because that's what brings it to you. Yeah. That's fantastic, man. Thank you so much. That was so good. You are, you are awesome. I Thanks, really appreciate Jeff, man. it. I always enjoy talking to you.